Okay, so we are doing a demo video today for our homemade flatbread pizzas. And we are actually going to be making the dough from scratch, which is exciting. Now in this demo video, I did mention to you already before, um, I will just be demoing the actual dough because I think we all know how to grate cheese and put toppings on our pizza. So it's just showing the dough. So we need a few things to get us started. If I could get everyone turned around and looking at me, that would be wonderful, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna get started with our yeast. So I'm just grabbing kind of like a small glass bowl, not too, too small because we want the yeast to be able to, um, you know, dissolve in a good enough surface area. And what we need is one teaspoon of active dry yeast. So I like to use the quick rise yeast because it takes less time to, uh, to rise. So I'm just going to add a teaspoon, okay, into my bowl. And then we need to add some warm water. Now with the water, we don't want it to be too hot or too cold. So I would say this is a little bit warm because yeast is basically, right now it's like dried, but it is technically alive in a sense. It's a, it's a type of bacteria. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out a good temperature here. Because if it's too hot, it will kill the yeast, and too cold, the yeast won't start to bloom. Okay, so we need one and a half cups of very warm water, so I'm just going to grab my one cup measure here. And tomorrow when we're doing this, if you guys want me to come and test your water, I can do that. So, perfect, that is one. Okay, and then I just need another half. A bit too much. Okay, always checking at eye level. Okay, so now I have my yeast in my warm water. I'm going to give it a light mix with a fork. Okay, just to basically dissolve the yeast in the water. Okay, and then I'm going to add some oil. So it calls for olive oil, we're gonna use vegetable oil, which is fine. So I just need two tablespoons in here. So one and two. Okay, and I'm just gonna set that aside. I'll still need the oil, so I'm going to leave that out. And we get started on my dry mixture. Now the dry mixture is super easy. All it is is basically flour and salt. So I need four cups of flour. So this does make a larger recipe, but because we're doing our own basically individual flatbreads, it'll be perfect because, or at least that's what I'm hoping, um, because you guys are each going to do your own. So you're gonna take this one big dough ball and you're going to separate it into however many dough balls you need for your group. Okay, three, and finally four. Okay, set that aside. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is I have already preheated the oven. Um, so I've just put it on at 350. You will need to actually cook it at a higher temperature, but I like to preheat the oven um, prior to making the actual dough because the dough needs a warm place to rise. And so what I like to do is once I've mixed all my dough, put it in my bowl, I like to set it um, near the warm oven. So the warm oven helps to the dough to rise because the yeast needs the heat in order to rise properly. Okay, so I'm just going to um, add my salt now to my mixture of my flour, so I just need one teaspoon of salt. Okay, and I'm just going to whisk that together. So you wanna definitely use a large bowl for this, just one sec, um, to make sure that you have enough room for all of the ingredients. Yes, yes, okay. Um, while I'm just waiting for my yeast to rise, it needs about five minutes, 
Okay, so it's probably been about two to three minutes so far, so just another couple minutes. Um, I'm just going to explain what toppings you guys can have tomorrow. Um, now, I haven't checked. I did give a grocery list to Mrs. Martin. Um, I haven't double checked everything that was uh, purchased, but this is what I included um, on here. And also, if you ever to make this recipe at home, you can obviously do the recipes uh, or the ingredients that you would like. So sauce options, so I have tomato sauce that we can use. Um, I also did ask for pesto, so hopefully she grabs some pesto. Pesto is an awesome option. Um, it's basically like basil, olive oil, sometimes has pine nuts in it, so if we have any nut allergies, we have to make sure to be very careful with that. I forgot to mention to grab one that doesn't have nuts. Yeah. Oh, did she? Okay, perfect. Um, and then usually has Parmesan in it. It's very pungent sauce. You don't need a lot of it, but it is excellent. and I love it. Um, and then some topping options. We have obviously mozzarella cheese. We'll have some Parmesan, uh, pepperoni or ham, peppers, roasted red peppers, pineapple, tomatoes, onions. And then I can't remember if I asked her. I don't think I got her to get mushrooms. I can't remember. And then we do have some frozen spinach if you do want um, some spinach on it. And then you can also add some other seasonings on top. Okay, things like garlic powder, oregano, um, if you were to make this at home at the end, what I love to do is do a little balsamic glaze on the top once it's finished. Probably my favorite mixture for this kind of um, flatbread pizza would be pesto sauce, roasted red peppers, mozzarella, and then at the end, drizzle it with a little bit of balsamic. That's probably my favorite for this kind of thing. Okay, so I think this has been sitting for approximately five minutes or so. So I'm gonna add it to my bowl. Okay, so just carefully pour it in. Now I want to make sure I get all of that yeast out of the bowl. So I'm going to scrape it out. Okay, just like that. And I'm just going to start mixing it with a wooden spoon. And then once it's kind of all mixed in, I'm going to uh, turn it out onto a floured surface to knead it. Now this dough does need about eight to 10 minutes of kneading. So what I would like you guys to do when you get into the kitchens to do this is I want you to take turns because I want everyone to kind of practice kneading their dough. So what it, you'll see, I don't know if you can see that, it starts to kind of look a little bit like stringy a little bit. Okay, that's exactly what you want it to look like. It means that my yeast has dissolved and it's basically kind of woken up. Okay, so it's kind of coming into a ball. There's no more kind of wet mixture left. So I'm gonna grab that flour again. And sometimes I just like to have a little bit in a measuring cup so I'm not sticking my fingers into the flour. Set everything aside. Okay, and I'm just going to lightly flour my surface. Now, you don't want too much flour on your work surface because there's already lots of flour in here. You'll notice when I pour it out, okay, there's lots of flour still kind of left in the bowl. So scrape everything out onto your floured surface. And you don't want to add too much extra flour because you don't want your dough to be too dry. Now, if it is really wet, okay, you can obviously add some more flour, but you want it, if anything, to be a little bit more dry than wet. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of flour to my hands and I'm just gonna bring it together, okay, to try and get all that excess flour. And so far this is working lovely, so I'm very happy about that. So you notice I'm just kind of picking it up and pushing it back into itself just until I get it kind of together into a ball and then I will start kneading it properly. So it's a little bit stringy, but that's okay. That means that the yeast is alive. And this is when we start to knead the, no the dough properly because everything's kind of come together. So to knead the dough, what I like to do is kind of take the, um, the peel of my hands here and push it into the dough. You can use both hands too if you want, okay? fold it over onto itself, turn it, and then kind of do the same thing over and over and over again. So push down with your heel, turn and flip. I kind of do it all in one. 
And if it starts sticking to your counter, you can just start to add a little bit more flour or you can just move around whatever flour you have. Now, tomorrow, when we're actually doing this, I would recommend maybe giving your counter a clean prior to um, doing this, just because I believe the grade nines are cooking today. So just make sure that the, the counter is clean before you actually put this out on. Okay, so notice how it's starting to come together into a ball, the stringiness is kind of going away. The more you need, basically, the better it will get. So this does take you know, a bit of time, a bit of effort, and this is why I would say like, give each of your group members maybe two minutes, okay? And it will start to get more and more smooth the more you need it. So you'll notice it's kind of coming together more nicely. Okay, and I'm not adding any more flour now because I can feel it's nice texture. Okay, so each group member can probably do this for about two minutes or so. Okay, so as I'm kneading this, I'm just going to explain what we're gonna do after this, just for the purposes of the people in the video who don't have to watch me <laughs> for the next few minutes doing this. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna grab a separate bowl once your dough is nice and kneaded, and you're going to add some oil into the bowl. So rather than using our crappy flour bowl, okay, because the dough will stick to this, I'm gonna grab this bowl instead, nice clean glass bowl, and I'm gonna add some oil to that, and I'm gonna put the dough in that bowl and just kind of turn it around so that it's oily on all sides. So basically it helps it to prevent it from sticking so it can rise better. Okay, while you're waiting for your dough to rise, okay, it'll take about um, 45 minutes to rise. Okay, while you're waiting for that, you can prep all of your toppings. Okay, so um, if you want your toppings raw, that's fine. You can just kind of chop them up and prep them. Um, I really like cooked toppings on my pizzas too. So I have things like onions and spinach. Um, so you can always give your onions like a nice saute. I have some peppers, you can saute those as well. So you can kind of play around with it. And if you want something different from your group members, that's fine. Okay, each person can have whatever they want as their toppings. So you can kind of see the dough is coming together nicely. It's got a nice kind of glutinous feel to it. Okay, this is exactly what we want it to look like. After the dough has risen, okay, by about 45 minutes and all your toppings are ready, okay, what you can do is, again, lightly dust your surface, okay, and then you're going to divide up your dough. So I would say most groups will probably have at least three people, if not four. This will probably divide up perfectly, and you're gonna make your dough into a flatbread. So usually a flatbread, if you ever get it like in a restaurant, it's usually like an oval, okay, kind of like this. So each person will get their own piece, and you're gonna roll it out and kind of pat it out. So you can either use a rolling pin, you can use your hands, okay, whatever you kind of want. Okay, then you'll put your toppings on top, and uh, once it's on a cookie sheet, I would recommend probably putting a little bit, um, you can either put parchment down or something like that underneath so that it doesn't stick to the cookie sheets. Add your toppings, and uh, our oven should be preheated to 450 at that stage. Okay, after that, we'll bake them for about 12 to 15 minutes, and then you'll get to enjoy. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do for today in terms of kneading, hasn't been eight to 10 minutes, but it's coming together pretty nicely and just for purposes of the demo, I wanna make sure that we can see it uh, being prepped. So what I like to do is, this is kind of like the ugly side, okay, where I've been kind of folding it over on itself. So I like to kind of bring it together so that the nice side is up. Put a little oil in my bowl. We don't need a ton. Okay, maybe a teaspoon or less. And I'm just going to coat it with the oil. Okay, we don't want it drowning in oil, just a nice light topping. And then you're gonna take just a kitchen towel, okay, put it over top, 
and you're gonna put it in a warm spot in, on the oven. So what you'll be able to tell is, just put your hand over the stove and you'll be able to tell where the warm spot is and just put it nearby that and we'll need about 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, oh, underneath the warming drawer. I will try that today. I just learned that the bottom drawer actually, it was only like a few months ago, is actually for warming. So I'll try that today, see how it goes. And then if that works well, then we'll do that tomorrow. Awesome, thank you for the reminder. Okay, let's do that. See, we learn something new every day, right? I'm gonna check to see how warm it is. See, the thing is, is this is cold. The oven is on. There is no warming drawer. No, so it's not very warm, so I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it on top. Okay, so back left is kind of the warmest area. I kind of just open my, my tea towel so that it's kind of sitting over the bowl like this rather than tucked under. Okay, and I'm gonna set my timer for about 45 minutes and then it should be risen enough. Okay, any questions? All right, just to stop the recording.